I don't think many men actually benefit from marriages or relationships anymore. You're not going to get married? No, I could have a life partner, but I don't need the government. I don't need the government involved in my love life. Marriage is a bad deal for men. The way marriage is done in the United States is very dangerous for men. There's not really much upside for you. Let's go back to the marriage thing. It's wishful thinking. The question I get asked a lot is, why don't you want to get married? Or why are you so against marriage? There's two questions there. One, I haven't, I decided a long time ago that I am not going to wait and put my life on hold whilst I find a partner. Um, whilst I wait for someone to come and love me, I'm not going to do that. I am going to focus on the love that I have for myself and continue to build that for the rest of my life. The relationship with myself is the most important relationship I will ever have and you will ever have. No. To not base my whole identity and my whole purpose as a woman around babies and marriage. Um, it's, it's not something that... I want to base my whole value around. Women are sold the idea by the patriarchy that a woman's value is purely based on whether she has children and whether a man wants to marry her or whether she is going to get married. So by me just removing all of that, it, it just takes so much pressure off me. It really, truly does. And then now with so many studies coming out, proven statistically that single, unmarried, child women are the happiest yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. It literally it's proven. patriarchy on its knees by, by proving this. Now, another question is like, well, what about a partner? You don't, you, you want to be single forever? If I was single forever and this was my life the way it is, the life that I've built is in more than enough for me. It is wonderful. You guys, like, I've built, I've spent years building a life where I get to travel when I want, I get to do what I want with whoever I want, and I love my life. So the life that I've built by myself it always will be and if someone came along and, and it added to that in a wonderful soul love way who knows but i am not going to base my whole identity purpose and value around being married and whether a man loves me because i love myself enough there's no void there for anyone to complete there's no void there <laughs> oh man poor girl i'm totally happy I'm, statistics have proven that I'm the happiest person in the world. I'm so happy and full of joy that I need to tell you, without ever once cracking even a smile, I need to tell you strangers on the internet how happy and fulfilled I am. I really uh, feel for her. I don't mean to make fun of her. Because she has been sold a bill of goods. And she also is um, mistaken about, obviously, the most important relationship one has. She says, the most important relationship you can have is with yourself. That obviously isn't true. The most important relationship you can have is with God. And even if you, you're not religious, or you say, I'm an atheist or something like that, then, all right, let me try to put it into more secular terms. A more important relationship than the one between you and your own tastes and pleasures is the relationship you have with the truth. For no other reason than if you are disconnected from the truth, you're going to, you know, you're going to walk into walls and do things that are harmful to you. So at the very least, you'd have to say your, your most important relationship is with the truth, not just with you as a subjective, pleasure-seeking bag of flesh. Now, a Christian would say, well, Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. God, God is the truth himself. So I guess we're basically saying the same thing here. But she's not, she's not saying that. She's mistaken about that. She says, so I don't want to wait around for someone to love me. Well, you don't have to wait around for someone to love you. You can love someone. You can be active here, but you have to not focus on yourself. You have to focus on somebody else. You have to be so full of love from the relationship that you have with God that that overflows and you love somebody else. So uh, she's far from alone in this uh, error, but it's not good. There's so much more to say. First, though, go to supremecoup.com. Slash Knowles. The radical left is plotting a Supreme Court coup. They're not even trying to hide it anymore. These progressive ideologues want to eliminate the court's conservative majority by packing it with their own hand-picked justices. It's not court reform. It's a blatant power grab to get the outcomes they want. Here's the frightening part. If one party controls the House, Senate, and presidency come January, they could restructure the court overnight. With a simple majority vote and a president's signature, their plan becomes reality. But there is hope. First Liberty is leading the charge to protect the Supreme Court from this radical plan. They're fighting to preserve the legitimacy of the court and the separation of powers that safeguards our freedom. Don't let them Venezuela your United States. Go to supremecoup.com slash Knowles. That is supreme, 
C-O-U-P dot com slash K-N-O-W-L-E-S to learn how you can help stop the left's takeover of the Supreme Court. The future is in your hands. Right now, go to supremecoup.com slash Knowles. This is one of the biggest issues at stake in this election. Supremecoup.com slash Knowles. These are four reasons why you should reconsider marriage. Let's get it. One, look at the numbers, bro. Family and friends. The up-to-date divorce rate in America is 56%, with 80% being filed by women. And you know what's crazy? It won't really be... It's not 56%, right? that's not true. 15, 10 to 50% of couples, right? They stay married unhappily just to keep the family afloat. You know, it's cheaper to keep her, you know? So, and this is for the high earners, right? Good, Six that's better. <laughs> Six figures, millions, right? A lot of y'all meet your wives after your success was already made, right? So guess what? When she divorced your ass, right? Because look at the stats, right? When she divorced your ass, she's walking away with half of your assets and money just for having a meow between her legs and looking pretty. She didn't work for the So if she wasn't with you shooting in the gym before your success, don't marry her. Three, you're most likely in the first three years, right? The sex is still good. You know, she's doing things for you, things of that nature, right? But guess what? When you're falling, it feels like you're flying until reality hits. All that goes down eventually in most cases. Again, look at the stats. I ain't just making up numbers. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Four, every, if not almost every married man I know that been married for 10 plus years, they always tell me, don't do it, bro. You know, jokingly, with a little smirk, a little laugh, but let me tell you something, bro. Every joke has a truth behind it, like a hating mother, right? Now, I'm not saying don't settle down and have a family, right? Still be a leader, protector, and be there for your girl or fiance financially, right? But don't sign that contract. And if that's not enough for her, <laughs> then she's marrying you for the wrong intentions and the wrong things. I'm gonna leave it at this, right? Look at the numbers. There's three rings, the engagement ring, the wedding ring, and the suffering. Stop being a Okay, this guy's kind of funny. His numbers are a little off. It's not it's not really 56%. But even if you say the, the divorce rate is around 50%, which again, when you when you look at people who have been married and divorced multiple times, that sort of skews the numbers. But and when you look at different groups, the secular versus more religious people, and even among religious people, sort of people who are a little more modernist in their religion versus people who are a little more traditional, like Orthodox Jews or traditionalist Catholics or what, you know, then the numbers really, really drop, especially among traditionalist Catholics. It's certainly under 5%. I think it's like two or 3%, though there aren't a ton of numbers on it. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. People get divorced because it's a fallen world, but uh, you, there are ways to mitigate this risk. With, with this guy, though, what, his advice is going to make this a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's the big problem. Because if you marry the kind of woman where, you know, you just, you wait, you get married much later, you marry, say, let's say a much younger woman, you marry her basically just for her looks and all the things she can do for you, like you've, uh, he was just describing, then yeah, she probably is going to be more likely to take your money. <laughs> she probably will be a gold digger and that's no good. If, however, you get married maybe a little bit younger or you get married, even if you get married older, you get married for uh, different reasons and you have a more sacramental understanding of what marriage is, uh, you're going to be much less likely to get divorced. If you uh, settle down and start a family, but, but but you withhold yourself from the other person, you withhold your love from the other person, you you are instantly creating a, a broken family. Because if you're not, if you don't actually have sacrificial love for your wife, your wife is not your wife's not going to have it for you. And the product of your love, your your children, or the physical instantiation of that love that's supposed to exist between the two of you, is going they're going to have a lot of problems. Okay, I'm Michael Knowles. This is the Michael Knowles Show. See you tomorrow.